Welcome to Fatality Field in Phoenix, Arizona, where once again, the SFLM Championship descends as the Albuquerque Adams and Madison Lynx fight for their third SFLM Championship in their long and excellent histories. Good evening, I'm Cameron Irvine, alongside Chad Rowland tonight, and we're looking forward to, on Draft Eve, Looking forward to uh, seeing what these rookies have left in the tank. Chad, good evening. Welcome welcome to Phoenix. And Cam, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Looking forward to watching these rookies going after that championship title. This is an exciting night for us. Adams in the bright green. Madison in the orange pants, white tops. That is Switch Thumper, your leader in passing yards in the SFLN this season. Just over 2,600. Albuquerque wins the toss. They will defer to the second half. Albuquerque and Madison. Albuquerque winners in season two and five. Madison in winners one and four. Who gets their third? Yay, Verity. Kick it. We're underway. From the eight, on the return, little juke, fumble the ball, oh. and it is recovered by, uh, who got it? Madison, Madison. Woo! right at the start of the game. That is Mike Olsen jumping on the football. The Lynx breathe a sigh of relief, and out comes Switch Thumper. Yeah, that's the way to start the game right there, Cam, if you're Madison. I mean, they have been undefeated in the playoffs so far in their career, and we'll see what they can do here on this first drive. Thumpers out of the gun, four wide receivers against a 3-2 defensive look out of the dime. Thumper to pass, fires down the middle, incomplete. Route a little off kilter, looking for Dylan Lewis. Lewis and Prince Wonder, nearly identical records, both over 600 passing yards this season. The rest of the Madison offense includes Michael Brown at running back, Jay Balmer is at fullback, and Ron Haynes leading the SFLM and receiving despite being a tight end. The two-way player out of Florida is your tight end wearing number 86. Second down and 10 at the Madison 33. Trips off the right side for the Lynx. Single back, Thumper fires it outside. Wide open, Ron Haynes first down to the 44. That's a pickup of 11. And the first move of the sticks of the game belongs to the Lynx. Ron Haynes out there just doing a little simple out route switch thumper trying to get that first pass completed. He was able to do that and get this drive going. Albuquerque's defense on the line. Melt Gibson, Mickey Gibson, TJ Assassin, their sacker or sack leader. Linebackers Michael Smith Jr., uh, Sim Broski, and Ace Singletary. That pass over the middle is caught by Lewis. In the secondary, Tobias Gordon, Ricky Robinson, Alex Marshall, Gold Osborne Davis, and of course, Dante Grimm, two way out of Louisiana, second and four. I'll just see this run game get going here on this play there, Cam. You know, last week uh, in their win at San Jose, Madison switched things up a little bit uh, offensively, got Michael Brown going. So I agree with you. We'll see how much of that they do tonight. Instead, the first carry goes to Balmer. The fullback picks up two on a dive play uh, to set up a third down and two. Wrapped up at the end of the play by big number 97, Tim House. Jay Balmer, one of the top projected players in this upcoming draft tomorrow night, Cam. Good to see him get the rock first. Third and two at the 48. Handoff, Brown, first down, Madison to the Albuquerque 44-yard line. You mentioned the draft uh, coming up, the two-day event, 55 spots up for grabs. Um, less spots than, than we're used to, Chad, but 644 yep. slots. It's a lot of players, and uh, looking forward to seeing uh, seeing who all gets their name called tomorrow night. Yeah, really looking forward to that. It's my favorite weekend of the year. And off, Brown got a lane. Picks up six to the 38-yard line. First there to make the stop was 
Mickey Gibson. Your panel for Saturday and Sunday, Jacob Clear hosting for the first time as you are uh, giving analysis tonight for the first time. Chad, there's a first time for everything, so Jacob Clear is your host in round one, along with Eddie Gage, Garrison Blue, and Daniel Wright on Saturday's panel. Sunday's panel hosted by Chris Curtis and Nate Hall, Chad Rowland, and Michael Prococo on the panel for Sunday night as Brown gets another first down to the Albuquerque 33. And since the fumble recovery on the opening kickoff, Madison has gone three plays, and they are now in scoring position. And notice, Cam, what they're doing. They're running straight up the middle. The scouting department of Madison must have found something in that defense to where they can say, look, we can run up the middle on this Albuquerque on this Albuquerque team, and they're showing it right now. Brown running really well on this drive. That sets up a first down and 10 at the 33-yard line. Big Geo in the chat has said a few times, first down, let's go, move them chains. He's got to have that control C, control V, I, I would have to imagine. First and 10, <laughs> under eight to go in the first quarter. Thumper drops back to pass five steps. Thumper's got plenty of time, fires down the middle of the field, oh. incomplete, knocked away by Ace Singletary. They'll set up a second down and 10 second incomplete pass of the drive for Thumper. Ace Singletary, the two-way player, uh, making a great play there, deflecting that pass, and Madison's going to be looking to try to get this thing going here. Never thought I'd say this, but Thumper and the Lynx abandon the run and uh, don't come up with any yards. 4-3 out of the defense for Albuquerque. Thumper under center, split backs, three-step drops, fires it outside to Brown. Brown with a little bit of space, gets what he can to the 29-yard line, shoved out of bounds by Robinson and company, and that'll set up a third and seven. Yeah, I'm not really liking the last two play calls there, Cam. I mean, you know, you were like you mentioned, you were running the ball very well up the middle. You were getting a lot of positive yards with Michael Brown. You go to the pass, not really getting anything out of those. Now you got a third along here. Third down seven. Again, they go trips here. We saw uh, Ron Haynes do a little out route earlier in the drive. He's on the line of scrimmage there at the top of your screen. And this time, Thumper goes down the middle of the field, Ooh. and I thought he had Wonder. Prince Wonder nearly... Made a wonderful catch, but it bounces off the hands, and instead we will see SFLM's most uh, productive kicker of season six, Juniper Belson, six foot one seventy-five, made fifteen field goals out of seventeen this season. That was most in the SFLM. Yeah, wonder it looked like when I was watching that replay there, Cam. He looked like he had it in his hands. Might have been a good defensive play, or might have just been a simple drop. 46 yards in the biggest stadium Juniper Belson has ever kicked in. From the left hash mark, the right footed kicker off the high snap. Fires it down the field and it is boom through. That would have been good from 52. That kick is good and it's Madison on the road getting our first points of the night. Juniper Belson, the, the consensus best kicker in the SFLM and the consensus best kicker in the draft block boards as well, Jason Miller throwing him high in the first round. So interesting to see him still kicking the ball very well. Yeah, Verity may have something to say about that. Kicked the game winner against Madison just two weeks ago, or a little less than two weeks ago, actually, in overtime of a classic, 34-31 to end the season. That is how Albuquerque and Phoenix, Arizona ended up hosting this game. Otherwise, we would have been in St. Paul, Minnesota for the first time for the SFLM championship, maybe some other time. This is Albuquerque's first chance on offense and a big hit on special teams. Blast the returner, Bo Laverne. That's where Albuquerque will start with it with 7.22 to go in the first quarter. Enter Ty Patek That's, uh, in Tacoma last season, now in Albuquerque. Six foot two, twenty-one. another high value prospect on the board, Chad. Yes, very high prospect, Ty Patek. Going to go in that first round, I believe and really wanted to see how he comes out here on his first drive in this big stadium. Out of the shotgun, Patak with four receivers. Fires it down the field, Ed Williams. Williams picks up nine to the 32. The rest of this Albuquerque offense, it is small but mighty. Josh Slap is your running back. Honus Adobe and Ed Williams are your receivers, both two ways, and at tight end is Craig Westlake. Not a ton of... Uh, Offensive weapons in terms of the re, uh, the passing game in this championship for us, Chad. But uh, uh, what we do have is very interesting. Ed Williams, um, a, a two-way player himself, is third in SFLM in uh, yards per completion. So he is their big down-the-field threat. There is an offside for Madison. That will move the chains. Ed Williams, a former Rambler, 
uh, being a two-way player this season and has played very well so far. Was surprised not to see him picked up, though, Cam. Yeah, that is surprising, and depending upon what he decides to do with his career, this could be the pinnacle here tonight. Yep. Very, very true, Cam. It, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, Chad, if you're an SFL or SFLM. If you have a chance to win a championship, it's a big deal. It's a big deal tonight. I, I agree with you. I have not had that opportunity to be in the championship game yet. I'm hoping to too very soon, and uh, I'm kind of jealous of these guys right now. First and 10 of the Adams, 37 after the offside penalty. The handoff will go to slap on a counter. He'll cut it back up the middle of the field and is wrapped up after a two-yard gain. Tackle made by Claudius Periwinkle, an outside linebacker, 6'3", 245. He leads all rookies in tackles this season. Yeah, and Josh Slap and the rest in the Adams are trying to do the same thing that Madison was doing the last drive, trying to run up the middle, but it's not working for them so far. Second out and eight at the Albuquerque 39-yard line. Hand off to Slap, and Slap spins away, picks up three to the 42. We're halfway through the quarter. That tackle is uh, made out of the slot for Madison. That's Owen Ward. Let's meet the rest of the Lynx defense on the line. Dan Dash at defensive end has had a very productive season. Kano Forreston at defensive tackle. Linebackers are DJ Woods. Perry Winkle was mentioned, and Al Farouk. Amino cornerbacks are Xavier Rowe the third, Newton North safeties, Maurice Peterson, Joseph Lama, JT Jackson, Tyler Spencer, Patak, pass outside. Ooh. Williams dropped it. Fourth down. That would have been a first down. Now Albuquerque comes away with nada on the opening drive. Yeah, that looked like it was Bo Laverne actually that dropped it right Check, there. Yep, yeah, you're right. Um, yeah, and just did not have I mean it was right in the breadbasket, could not get the catch, and now Albuquerque's got to punt it away. Good call, Chad. 14 is not 13. Must have skipped that uh, <laughs> chapter in school. Don't know what happened there. Not too sure. What do you think I was you know, out doing if I was if I uh, if I missed that chapter? What was I probably doing? Probably what? Eating ice cream out of the lunchroom freezer, something like that. My, maybe. I mean, I'm not sure. Maybe you're out, you know, playing hopscotch. I mean, <laughs> Hop, hopscotch. I'm a hopscotch man now. Hopscotch. Okay. All right. Interesting. That's, uh, that's, that's my. I'm showing my age. Am I, am I playing jacks too and listening to 60 show tunes? What's what's happening? Ooh, here we go. <laughs> First down. Hey, there's nothing wrong with a little hopscotch and some 60 show tunes. Yeah, That's okay. just where you get, right. you get the blood flowing. Uh -huh. Yeah, okay. Just don't ask me to jump rope. Heavy feet. Heavy feet. Heavy doesn't, feet. Doesn't work out. First down for Madison at the 26. After the uh, punt from Albuquerque on their opening possession, split backs for Thumper, has Wonder at the bottom of the screen. He's in one-on-one -on -one coverage from Ricky Robinson. Handoff fullback, and again, up the middle, Madison picks up six yards. Jay Balmer busy here in this first quarter as the Lynx slowing things down on the Adams defense. There he is once again, Jay Balmer finding the hole and just powering through. He's done a terrific right. job so far, and he's just making that draft stock cam go even higher. We've given the starting lineup, so now it's time for Chad. Shout-outs there. Bugler, Joseph Clausen, Ashley Jackson, Joshua Hartshorn, uh, Grant Hardaway, Derek Majors, Jason Peace, many others in the chat. Welcome. Thanks for being here tonight as Wonder makes the catch first down to the 39-yard line. Special thanks to Stephen Hacker and the rest of our community for helping us to get an all-star game on the field. <laughs> Tough sledding this offseason, but uh, no difference in the result, Chad, as the East roughed up the West, uh, similar to the Prospect Bowl a few weeks ago uh, on Axel Raven's channel. Yeah, I was checking out a little bit of the game before we jumped in here and, and watching my uh, former quarterback, Johnny Pickler, really just picking apart that West defense. Uh, played a terrific game tonight. Kevin Say was crazy. 17 carries, 198 yards, and three touchdowns, one MVP. Handoff to Balmer again. This time, uh, Albuquerque all over it, starting to sense a little bit of uh, familiarity in play calling. Sim, Broski, and House there with another stop, second and 10. Yeah, the defensive coordinator, Chad Stinson, probably yelling at them guys right now, telling them, cram the middle, just jam it up, hold them guys in. They did it on that play there, Cam. Four minutes, first quarter, 3 nothing. Madison on top of Albuquerque. Well-played game to start things off as uh, Balmer with a little spin out of the fullback position. 6'3", 245, glides across the field of the 45-yard line. Man, look at him. I got to tell you, he moves pretty well for a big guy, right? He's trying to do his best Hanzo impression, getting through that hole and getting some positive yards. 
Third and four, three receivers to the top of the screen. Far side right, Thumper, three steps back, hits Brown. Got to make a man miss, will not. Good open field tackle. Ricky Robinson been doing that all season for this Adams defense. And Albuquerque gets the stop, Madison off the punt. Ricky Robinson, 5'11", 198, but don't let the little size fool you. I mean, he just really laid the wood there on Michael Brown. A power back at that. Great tackle there by the young man. Shout-outs, Josh Farnsworth, Michael Smith, Jr., Switch Thumper, Ernest McRae in the house. Fourth and two. The Lynx have the offense on the field. I would be shocked if they went for that. I wouldn't mind the play call here, Cam. It'd be really interesting to see. But it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Not this early. Madison will burn a timeout. No harm, no foul. They'll kick it deep to Albuquerque. And actually, uh, we'll have a chance of pinning the Adams inside their own 20. We'll see what happens. There's a look at Michael Prococo. He's been running this Madison team. Crazy. Crazy stat out of SFLM. Madison has never lost a playoff game, ever. They are 5-0. Yeah. and oh, Beat San Jose last week on the road 24-9. to nine. Uh, But uh, even though Albuquerque is your favorite in this one, uh, Madison does not lose in the postseason. No, when it comes to the postseason, Madison is the best, right? I mean, 5-0, and oh, that's a very impressive record. And just goes to show you that the, this coaching in this league does matter 100%. Albuquerque's not so bad themselves, 5-1 and one all time. Their lone loss, uh, an upset loss at home to Salt Lake, 33-20 back in season three. And Salt Lake went on to win the title that season. They upset San Jose um, in that championship to get their ring. One of, uh, well, the only team to win a title that's not in this game right now as uh, Madison and Albuquerque both fight for their third tonight. Yeah, this is this is the powerhouse matchup that everybody I think in the SFL and wanted to see came, and we're getting it tonight. Derek Majors, Madison Lynx alum, he was their quarterback in that championship win over Ottawa. Has made himself a great career in Portland. He's in the chat right now. First and ten at the twenty-one. Patak down the field. That pass is hauled in. Nine-yard pickup in Albuquerque. He's actually going to change up. The tempo of this game after kind of a slow start. That pass was hauled in by Kenny Jefferson. Second down and short now. Patak with five wide. Fires it down the field. Had oh. to adjust his pass due to oncoming pressure. And it's hauled in by Bo Laverne. Bo Laverne making up for that drop earlier with a big catch. Finding that soft spot in the defense. Patak five wide again. 3-2 defense. Down the field. Caught again. That is the third consecutive pass caught by a non-contract. Kenny Jefferson hauls it in. Second and short once more. Two minutes to go in the first quarter. Adams finding success here. Running slants. Down the field. Caught. Oh. It's Laverne again. Fourth. I don't think I've ever seen four straight passes completed to non-contracts. I don't Amazing. think I have either, Cam. If you have it, I have it. Incredible. Type attack. Getting everyone involved. This time again oh over the middle. They, sw they switched it up again. Five consecutive completions. Bo Laverne hauls it in, and Albuquerque finally lets Madison take a breather. Yeah, Madison was really focusing on the two wide receivers, right? You know, you're focusing on Williams and Adobe, maybe even Westlake. Actually, Westlake was not in there, but the three generic wide receivers they had in there was just stealing the show, and this is an incredible drive right now. So now they go different. Three in the backfield, second and four. Josh Slap is smashed in the backfield. A loss of one yard, tackle uh, made in conjunction, Owen Ward and uh, Al Farouk Aminu. Uh, yep, that's it, Aminu with the stop, third and five. Al Farouk Aminu, the week four signing. So only playing half the season so far, coming up with a big play there. TJ Assassin also signed in week four, Tyler Spencer week five signing. Third and five, type attack and a take oh. off and run, slides short of the first down. Credit to DJ Woods, who came in and uh, let Type Attack think about his career. He's got to get drafted tomorrow, right? Uh, he, can't, he can't be taking concussions out there or all sorts of things and driving down his draft stock. This is a smart play, Cam, if you think about this. I mean, they were back probably at the 36, right? And Type Attack gaining about three yards to get about to the 31 yard line, getting him probably in good field goal range for Veretti here. It's a 47-yard kick. Without that run, they may not be kicking this right now. Trying to tie the game at three before the end of the quarter. Verity 14-17 this season, and he bangs it through. That is good, and we've had a pair of kickers making an impact tonight here in the first quarter, which is not surprising since they have 29 made field goals combined in 16 games. 
Yeah, that kick barely getting through, Cam. I don't know if that would have been good from another three or four yards back. They have a so. wind situation going on. That is also true. Yeah, Belson's kick, I mean, he rocketed that through. Uh, something yep. to keep an eye on as we uh, hit the uh, late stages of this game that could come down to a field goal just like the previous matchup did. Is there a lot of wind in Arizona? Every once in a while, man. Desert storm. Every right? once in a while? I mean, I, I'm just glad that we're in Arizona. We didn't have to settle in for St. Paul, Minnesota. I don't know if I could have done ah, a Minnesota game. Who knows, man? We may have had some snow. It could have been a could have been a picturesque evening. Not here. Instead, here, we've got one quarter down and three to go. Madison three, Albuquerque three. You're watching the season six SFLM championship game on SFL YouTube. Phoenix, Arizona tonight, a perfectly pleasant 50 degrees, clear skies. It's a beautiful evening for football as Switch Thumper starts out of the gun from his own 28-yard line, fires down the middle of the field, one-handed oh. catch is caught, and Dylan Lewis is having himself a ball game here in the first half. Dylan Lewis showing all the GMs in the SFL, like, look what I could do, right? Everybody talks about Prince Wonder, but what about Dylan Lewis, right? Big one-handed catch right there in the middle of the field. Big play there by the young man. You've seen, uh, you've seen a lot of mocks, Chad. Um, yeah. What uh, What's Charleston going to do with the first pick? We'll get your thoughts after this play. They are, um, they are on the clock of sorts. Four wide for Thumper. Thumper fires it out to Brown. And Brown able to drag a defender forward for six yards. So what do you think about Charleston and their decision? You know, it's, it's going to be a big decision for him, right? This can be a make or break pick. If they pick the wrong guy, it's not going to really do well for their franchise. But I see, I see them maybe going offensive line. Um, I've seen a lot of mock drafts picking Geno McFly with the top pick that's probably where they end up going i would assume but we'll we'll find out tomorrow night right cam yep second and four at the 48 that's brown with a handoff picks up three albuquerque's been uh, doing a little bit better job trying to shut him down uh, alex marshall with that tackle and by the way uh chad i know what you mean about uh, st paul 28 degrees and snow would be starting in half an hour if we were there well, and really, it's just because of the fact that, one, it's a little cold there tonight, I would assume, and two, that's where the legend are based out of, and I just don't want to be in the same state <laughs> as those guys. You may not get out of the building. Third uh, one. I yeah, I wouldn't. And Brown, oh, they're going to say he didn't pick oh. it up. I don't know about that. That may be worth a challenge. Uh, we'll see. Yeah, I, I think I think Mike prococo has got to challenge that play, right? They, I don't think there was a very good spot there by our 62, and nope, there it is. There's a challenge from Percoco. Frosty Times says only three likes. Everyone hip thrust that like button. It's an interesting way to do it, but no judgment here. Hit it. Here we go. I, I, he didn't really throw that flag very well. I wonder if he learned that from Andy when he was in Vancouver. <laughs> oh, he's he's way across the line right there, even before contact was made. They have to reverse Yeah, that. that's, that's a no-brainer. He's across. Joshua Williams over in... Albuquerque, and it is overturned, and Madison will pick up the first down, so that's our first challenge of the evening. Security standing by. See that security guard standing right next to our 62? Yeah. Got to get him, got to get him extra protection around here. He might need it. First and 10 of the Albuquerque 48-yard line after the overturned challenge. Seven in the box, and off Brown. Nice job by Simbroski again, making sure Brown is unable to get away. Brown eighth in SFLM in carries, and what's interesting is Josh Slap, he commanded a lot of attention this season for Albuquerque's offense. He's been very quiet in this first half. Yeah, Josh Slap, 14 rushing touchdowns this season, eight more than any other player. Yeah, he commanded a lot of attention. But Michael Brown right now is showing that he's just as good, maybe even better of a running back. And again, Brown, what a block! Oh, oh my goodness, down the field. It almost looked like the defender didn't even see it coming, and Brown gets all the way to the Adam 29-yard line. Let's see if we get a number on this truck. Yeah, the, I'll tell you what, the offensive line really did a great oh, job blocking. It looked like number 50 right there. It's a great block. I think it may have been Jay Balmer, 30, down the field. 
There was one other, though. No 50 on the roster. Rookie mistake, Chad. But um, that's okay. I, you can. You may have been a four or three like yours, right? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, feel free to talk to me about 13. That pass <laughs> caught by oh, Haynes. Haynes is going to score Not a touchdown. Haynes. Madison, it is nine to three, and we have our first TD of the evening. Ron Haynes, the most dangerous man in the SFLM right now. I mean, just dominating this whole season. What a great route by him, was able to just keep the concentration, make the great catch, and be able to take it into the end zone. So Haynes making things happen for the Madison Lynx. That is no surprise. I'm sure that uh, Albuquerque's number one goal this week was to figure out how to wrap him up. Yeah. Ron Haynes, as you mentioned before, leading, leading the league this year, 877 yards for a tight end. That is very impressive. Extra point is good, 10-3 Madison. Ron Haynes is back in Florida for season 20 alongside Verit and Zarkov. Just a little bit behind uh, Zarkov, but I tell you, if Haynes keeps playing like this, Florida has got to figure out a way to get him more involved in the offense. In season 20, he has proven more than capable down here in the minors. I completely agree with you, Cam. I think Art Vandalay is sitting over there just licking his chops, watching Ron Haynes do well. Probably doesn't want him to do too well because he doesn't want to give away the secrets of Florida's offense, but uh, he's, he's impressing the hell out of me. So Laverne returns it up to the 27, 8-10 to go in the first half. Chad Rowland, Cameron Irvine here with you at Fatality Field in Phoenix, Arizona. If you're just joining us, um, the SFLM Championship game always hosted by the uh, SFL team closest in proximity to the hometown of the highest seed in the minors left standing. And uh, we get all these teams out of their makeshift practice facilities built in these eight cities and uh, get them into a big stadium. Fans always show up loud and proud. And uh, Aminu shows up loud and proud on that play for a three yard loss. Got to focus on Dean Lear, though. Dean Lear right there was kind of providing the pressure to where that side would have closed down. Aminu sneaking in there behind him and was able to make the tackle. Great play there by the front line. Second and 13 coming up for Patak. Josh Slap. Not a lot of running room tonight. Madison has uh, definitely solved some things uh, after giving up 34 points just a week and a half ago. Slap this time gets half of it back. Aminu with yet another tackle, and it'll set up a third down and seven for Patak. Josh Slap could possibly hear his name called tomorrow night. There is one open spot in the SFL for a running back, but you never know with the two-back system these days. He might just become a backup running back. A lot more teams um, with the two-back system so far uh, building for season 20. That pass is caught again. It is out to a receiver unexpected. Kenny Jefferson and Bo Laverne now have each three receptions, uh, but Albuquerque going to come up short of the sticks. They're going to have to punt it away. Yeah, I like the route. Don't get me wrong. I think Jefferson really did a fantastic route there. Just was not able to turn quick enough to get up the field. He was just tackled there just short of the line. Imagine having rosters, Chad, where every person that makes a play like that on the field is an actual person, or every player, I should say, is an actual person looking forward to uh, seeing the SFL in those days, and who knows, maybe sooner than you think. Yeah, I mean, that's something that's a, a dream, right? To be able to control all, what is it, 42 players on the roster. Um, you know, I would love to see that, right? Have everybody be in the chat and and uh, represent their players. So it's a goal down the line there, Cam. Switch thumper out of the gun. Madison's got control. Ron Haynes with a touchdown on the last drive. They're up 10-3 against the Adams. Thumper looking for slants and finding Prince Wonder who gets cut down at the Madison 48-yard line. Madison continues to roll. Yeah, that's the first time I've seen them run that slant route tonight, Cam, and they kind of ripped off from the Albuquerque when they had that good little drive there when they went no huddle. Same kind of play. Good catch there by Prince Wonder. Six fifteen to go in the first half. Michael Brown, seven carries, 38 yards. Looks pretty good. Here in the early going, three receivers. That's Lewis, 
closest to Thumper off the line. Audible for Switch. Switch fires outside. Wonder oh. dropped it. No gain. I think I think I saw Wonder in the chat earlier saying the drop stop here. And uh, they have plagued his hands now. Brings up second down. He's probably wondering why he dropped that pass, right? Wow. That was a bad joke. <laughs> wow. That was a terrible joke. I had to stop myself and wondered if I was still in the championship game. <laughs> Yikes. Second and 10 at the 48. Boo this man in the chat. Thumper out Boo of the shotgun. Me, please. <laughs> Fires it down the field. Oh, almost intercepted, but oh. just over the outstretched hands of Gold Osborne Davis. And that pass hauled in by a uh, slow moving Cameron Callahan at the end of that play. Gold Osborne Davis, one of only two players in SFLM with a pick six and a forced fumble almost got his mitt on that one well nobody's gonna boo Cameron Callahan after that catch here for the Madison Lakes. I mean that was just a great pass was able to concentrate even with the guy flying out of nowhere to maybe possibly deflect uh that was that was just a great heads up play there by him Eric Boogler let me let, let me know if I'm saying that name correctly in the chat. Said the cornier the better, as far as I'm concerned. So at least you do have one there fan. Go. Thumper deep down the field. That pass oh. is off the hands of Haynes. It was a difficult catch, to be fair. Uh, but uh, Haynes usually hauls that in. Marshall talking a little smack. Haynes says, "Get out of here, rookie." Second down. Yeah, I, I'm I'm wondering about the the decision making there by Thumper, right? Throwing it really what looked like triple coverage, Cam. I mean, the three guys all over Ron Haynes, and he all. And what's even more impressive is he almost still made that yeah. catch. Yeah, yeah, pretty good ball, pretty good ball. Put it on uh, Ron. Couldn't couldn't haul it in. Second down and ten. No turnovers yet in this game as Michael Brown takes a handoff to the four. We did have one fumble on the opening kickoff, but it was recovered. Uh, by the return team. Third down and six upcoming, and Ricky Robinson there again on the stop. He's having, he's, he's balling out right now. Yeah, Ricky Robinson has really impressed me throughout this season, just making play after play after play. I would assume that he will probably hear his name called either on Saturday or Sunday night there, King. Third and six, under five minutes to go in the first half. 10-3 Madison, they're on the move. Thumper trying to convert, finds a wide open receiver, dropped oh. it. Cameron Callahan drops the pass. I feel like every receiver on this unit has a drop in this first half. Nobody with more than one, just everyone with one. And Madison going to have to punt. Yeah, I think I think Madison needs to get some stick em on them hands because, I mean, they are just dropping everything they have, right? They really make the big catches, right, the tough ones, and then the easy ones are just dropping. That's really been their only flaw of the evening. Madison's played an excellent first half. Albuquerque nearly blocked it. That snap was way off target, but a really good punt is downed at the oh. four and officially marked down at the six. JT Jackson, two-way player, previously out of Jacksonville, makes a brilliant play down the field, and Albuquerque's starting inside their own 10-yard uh, line. I think that I think that ball surprised him just as much as anybody, right? It looked like it just bounced, and all of a sudden it was just right in his hands. He's like, "Oh, look what I have! A little Christmas present." JT Jackson, another player that uh, that went or that is currently unsigned for season twenty, playing in what could be his final game. And look at slap another three yard loss. Oh. Dan Dash in the backfield. Oh, and Ty Patak steps over slap. And Slap says, what are you doing? Well, wow. I don't know what's going on with this Adam offense. That was crazy. Look at Ty Patak just disrespecting his running back after not really being able to get some positive yards. Whoa, Slap made a man miss. Whoa. And there he goes. Trying to get a 97-yarder. Trying to be chased down. And will not be one man to beat. Look at Come Slap on, for the score. Ty Patak. Wow motivating his teammate to get going and he goes 97 for six man i gotta tell you what a run first off after getting disrespected by his quarterback when he said hey man you've got to get positive yards slap said hold this for me and he gets 97 yards to the house what a play by josh slap that is one of the craziest sequences gave me chills chad one of the Dude, craziest like, sequences I've ever seen. I just, I love it, right? I mean, you got to motivate your guy, and what better way to do it than step over him? And he's like, really? 
and then he just balls out, takes it to the house. I mean, my God, Cam, that was that was. I don't even know how to describe it right now. Dan Dash was in the backfield, uh, almost made the play for the safety, but missed on uh, Josh Slap, and Slap takes it into the end zone for the score. And now the Madison drops loom larger. Albuquerque's tied the game with Verity's extra point. We're all knotted up with four to play in the first half. Yeah, hopefully they're doing some drills on the sideline and Madison wide receivers being able to catch the ball because you are absolutely correct, Cam. Those drops just cost them seven points. <laughs> Mickey Gibson, I need a beer. I need Tylenol after that. <laughs> like, hallelujah, where's the Tylenol? From the nine, Madison on the return. Man, that is just, that is just crazy. I, I just, I'm still like thinking about it. I mean, that is going to be something that people talk about for seasons to come. People still talk about Art Vandelay and his big catch, right? Yeah. Now we're going to be talking. That's going to be replaced with, remember when Ty Patak stepped over his man and then he took it to the house for 97 yards? Everybody's going to remember this for a long time. And if Albuquerque ends up winning this game, we're going to come back to that play as the difference. Yep. The difference maker. Switch thumper back under center. Madison got to get it together. And off to the fullback, Jay Balmer. And they go right back to slowing this game down. Balmer picks up a healthy six. I think that's the right idea for Madison, though, right? I mean, they have been just so success successful on the ground with Brown and Balmer just going back and forth. And I think they just need to keep that going to try to take the momentum that just was created out of the stadium. Nine in the box for Albuquerque, two deep safeties. High formation for Thumper, going to run it inside that nine-man box, and Brown picks up the first down to the 41-yard line. A little slow to get up, but will. No help out from an Adam player on that one either. Moves the chains. Yeah, Michael Brown just piling through Sim Bro Bro Broski. I think that's how you say it, Sim Broski. Uh, the linebacker there, number 56. Great play there by Brown. Shotgun for Thumper, first and 10, under three to play in the first half. Slants, down the field, Ron Haynes. Pass a little off kilter, but able to uh, clean it up for a 13-yard pickup and a first down for the Lynx into Albuquerque territory. When in doubt, switch just goes to Ron Haynes, right? I mean, he just has the open of the middle of the field, just wide open. That's the easy pitch and catch there for the quarterback. A Singletary just gave it to him, didn't he, Chad? Turned his back yeah. as soon as he did that. <laughs> easy for switch. Yeah, A Singletary is going to have to get them cover skills up during the season because he just got burnt. Two and a half to go. A terrific storyline filled first half. Another handoff to Balmer. Picks up a couple this time. It's Broski again. In on the stop along with Mickey Gibson. I saw Mickey, um, I saw Mickey Melillo, uh, Adam Legend, uh, in the chat earlier. A little fur ball. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why I keep bringing up legend players to you on this. Uh, <laughs> Anytime you do, Cam, it's just going to happen. It's just how it is. Two minutes to go. <laughs> Madison 10. Now I'm thinking about Mickey's a Sasquatch. Madison 10. Albuquerque 10. You're watching the SFLM Season 6 Championship game on YouTube. Houston, by the way, has signed those two players on All the right. offensive line. So now officially, officially 55 players left to fill. Michael Brown picks up seven, five. Check that third and three to the Albuquerque 38. Just outside of field goal range. Two timeouts for Madison just before the first half. I got to tell you, that was a really good hit there by Alex Marshall, right? 5'11", 205 and was able to take down the power back Michael Brown. Fantastic hit there by the rookie. Three DB rookies on this Adams team under six foot. Robinson, Marshall, and Osborne, Davis all have had great seasons. Thumper down the field. Caught oh. by Lewis. He's gone. Touchdown, Madison. Dylan Lewis beats the defender and scores. The Lynx strike back, and the Adams still have not had the lead tonight. Was that Ricky Robinson that looked like he tried to go for the interception? I'm not too sure. Let's take a look and see who that was. Uh, number Dante 47. Grimm. That was actually Dante Grimm. Wow. The two-way player from Louisiana trying to be in the big spotlight, making a big pick, ends up turning into a touchdown for Madison, taking back the lead. That's the way to answer after that big run there, Cam. Grimm used to playing in the slot, Chad, and when you're the, when you're the deepest safety, 
you don't have the help like the slot does. And oh. yeah, he he was burned on that one. And Madison strikes back. What a first half. 17 to 10. Lynx retake the lead. That is five straight scores without two consecutive scores by either team. And Albuquerque now has three timeouts and 87 seconds to work with. I mean, if you were the Madison Lynx after that drive, like I said, that is the perfect drive to answer for, right? I mean, you just took all that momentum right back. Now the pressure's really on Albuquerque to see if they can get a score here before the end of the half. Boot it deep to the seven. This is Laverne on the return. And yep. that's where the Adams will start, 27-yard line. A yep, good returner by Laverne. I uh, want to be able to see what this Adam, Adams team respond with. I know they did a really great little quick no-huddle drive earlier in the first quarter. Let's see if they do that again here, Cam. Attack outside, that pass caught by Williams, picks up seven to start the drive. Good start to a two minute offense, gets out of bounds. Yep, good heads up there by Ed Williams, just doing a simple little out route, finding that sideline, stopping the clock, giving Albuquerque a chance here. Albuquerque leads the all time series at four wins to two. Dating back to season one, Madison got wins in season one and then earlier this season, a 34-24 win in week number one where Switch Thumper went off at over 400 yards of offense. Honus Adobe with his first catch of the night out of Atlanta brings up first down. Up Honus Adobe finally getting to the game. They've been really guarding Williams all game, but now Adobe's gonna make them realize there's another receiver on the other side of the field. We expected a close game here tonight. These four champions won by these teams have all been decided by one score. 26 to 20, 19, 13, 19, 14, 26 to 23, which was last year's result when Melillo got that game winning field goal. This time Ed Williams fails to get out of bounds. It's an eight yard pickup, still all three timeouts, one minute to go. Slaps in the backfield sidecar right, attack, three step drop, fires, caught. The Madison 44 yard line, that pass. Uh, hauled in by Craig Westlake and they are still moving I would suspect a timeout after this next play three wide receiver sets for Patak Patak looking around nobody opens who has to dump it off to slap slap jukes outside Ooh. spins back inside only picks up four timeout Adams yep perfect call there Cam you called it when he said when you said that then you're going to take a timeout after here couldn't find anybody down the field good thing he still has slap right there to drop down Made a good play. Really good coverage down the field, I thought. that. I mean, it's not often, especially on a play like that, that you're dumping it off to slap, but there's nobody open. Yeah, especially going no huddle, right? When you're wearing down that defense, they don't have a really chance to set and, and switch up or anything else like that. So good defensive play there by Madison. Second and six. Attack fires outside to slap, and slap picks up a few. Can't get out of bounds. Third down and one. Albuquerque going to want to make sure they get the first down before deciding what to do with the rest of this drive. Three receivers at the bottom of the screen. Patak looking for someone to get open. Fires to Westlake, caught inside the 20. Timeout, 18 seconds to go. And the Adams are <laughs> fighting back once more here in the uh, just before the half. That was a great route ran there by Westlake. Just a little simple slant, what it looks like, a 90 TE slant possibly. Just finding that middle of the field wide open, was able to get the first down and more. I think maybe the Adams have one more play in them before settling. Yep. And We'll love to see a shot to the end zone here. Yep, yep. Settling for a field goal could be all the difference in this very tight game. Although they have answered Madison tit for tat twice. See if they make it three. First and 10 to the 18, quick drop back. That pass is hauled in Ooh. by Williams and they will settle after the first and goal. Good stop by wow. Madison. I thought maybe Ed was gonna try to make some big plays there to get into the end zone, but still you get even more yardage. You make that field goal even easier if that's what you're gonna do here, Cam. So Barrett, gets a chance to boot his 16th through of the season, a chip shot of 23 yards. Adams out of timeouts. Make sure they get points out of this drive. 
Yep, and that's and that's a good that's a good decision there, right? You want to you don't want to try to go for the end zone, a possible fumble. You you don't have any more timeouts, so take the easy three. That way you're only down four and a half. 17-13, Albuquerque does get the ball to start the second half, factoring into a decision there. To go two for one and take their first lead starting in the third quarter. Yeah, I would like to see, you know, I would have, like I said, I wouldn't mind seeing some passing as obviously these two are the top two scoring offenses with the top two passing attacks. Um, you know, they have the weapons to do it, but like I said, I think you go into the half, hopefully you're able to stop them here, they don't make a big play. Then I believe, if I remember correctly, they get the ball back. If I remember right. Uh, Albuquerque gets the ball to start the second half. I think. Yep. So they can they can get a two for here going on. Yeah. All right, switch. What you got in you? Seven seconds left. 17-13. The underdog links. Not by much, but the underdog links up four. So look at Dante Grimm, who is probably upset with himself. Michael Brown, strong first half for Madison. Jay Ballmer as well. He gets that carry. And Madison will run out the end of the half. That was a championship half of football, if I do say so myself, Chad. 17-13, Madison on top of Albuquerque in the sixth. SFL championship game, SFLM championship game. Your thoughts on the first half, Mr. Rowland. Yeah, we thought that this would be a pretty much a defensive game, right? Um, both defenses have really showed up tonight. I mean, I know there is 17 to 13 right now, but really when you look at how they played, they have done a really good job besides some big plays. But in the second half, I see them, you know, really just changing things up, locking that down a little bit more, making this a, a run battle in my mind, and maybe we're going to have a really close game. Alex Marshall at free safety for Albuquerque leads all defenders today with seven solo tackles. He is making an impact tonight. Switch thumper, 161 yards and two touchdowns. Type attack with a buck, 27. Both field goal kickers have been perfect. And uh, I just love watching these rookies show up in the biggest of spots. Chad, just before the draft, it is an exciting weekend just before the holidays. Yeah, and that's the and that's the thing, right? You know, the guys that ball out in the championship games, and we see this in, the, in other leagues and stuff like that as well, right? In the NFL, if you see a guy balling out in a bowl game in college, their draft stock gets higher, right? This is the same situation. You you see a guy having, like Alex Marshall, for example, seven solo tackles in the first half, really showing that he could really hit whoever he can hit, right? And making big plays, maybe that gets his draft stock a little higher when these GMs are looking. I know that as a former GM myself, I look at that sort of thing. So, you know, these guys are make out here making big plays and really improving their draft stock. And maybe it's an instance, too, like in particular to Marshall, where you you say, uh, it's, we got, is anybody on our staff talking to that guy, right? You at least have to restart a conversation um, with Marshall just in case he fell through the cracks. Because as you know, Chad, uh, being a being an owner of a team, it's hard to talk to hundreds of players, especially when you're a team that has three, four, five selections. Yes, correct. It is hard. Trust me. I've been there, done that, and got the T-shirt. Um, but, you know, as a former GM myself, like you said, I, you know, I've really enjoyed, that's one of my favorite parts of this, right? Being able to, to get to know these guys that are coming into the league and really making those friendships. Um, and it's a lot of fun. The beautiful fatality field, 50 degrees this evening. Perfect weather for championship football. You see the bright green littered through the stadium as uh, people have made the about five hour trip from Albuquerque to Phoenix uh, to take this game in. You'd see some specklings of Madison fans who have made the trip. And we are underway to start the second half. Fun night here on SFLM or on uh, SFL YouTube as uh, Laverne makes a nice couple of jukes, making himself skinny, gets to the 28 yard line. And now Albuquerque has a chance to take their first lead of the night. I want, I'm really interested to see how they come out here in the second half, right? The adjustments that need to be made. The running game really didn't get going that great, except for that one big run there by Josh Slap. But let's see what they do in the second half. Let's see if they focus more on Slap or they go to that passing offense that's been so good all season long. If you're a player in this championship game, rep yourself in the chat. Let everyone make know that uh, you're here loud and proud as Josh Slap is off and running once again. Um, to the 43-yard line of Madison. JT Jackson on the tackle, 16.3 yards per carry, just like that for slap. 
Yeah, and one, first off, Ray, yes, I do have friends. And number two, look at Josh Slap just going to the outside. Great blocking, had wide open field. Big, big play there to start the half there for Albuquerque. I'm not going to ask you who your friends' names are. Traumatic experience for me after my mom was claiming she knew someone, and obviously she did. But then I asked her, well, what's her name? And my mom couldn't remember. So uh, <laughs> I, was, I was in trouble that day. Slap, or to Patak, rather, back to pass, and throws it out to Laverne, picks up three. Nice little route there by Laverne. You know, he's, he's made a couple of drops, right? Um, you know, done some really. He's done really good in the kick return game, uh, but coming out here, getting that first catch, or getting a second catch actually in the first half here, is is um, Kirky now coming up to the line. Second and seven at the Madison forty. Slap again. Takes a handoff. Good blocking. Oh. Man, Josh Slap oh, breaking a in. tackle, and the Adams have their first lead. What a run there by Slap. He, I'm surprised when he didn't just slap everybody as he went by, right? Spin move, power his way through. Beautiful run there by Josh Slap. Man. He just spin, breaking that tackle, and just gone, right? I mean, it, he just makes it look so effortless. Running into the end zone there, Cam. Josh Slap needs to call up Slap Your Mama seasoning. He needs to get on that. That's get, a, get him, get him an NIL deal. That's an that's NIL deal written all over it for him. Albuquerque, after uh, trailing or being tied the entire evening, finally has their first lead at home as they are starting to run downhill. Chad jo Josh Slap did nothing in the first quarter, nothing, and he has erupted this fan base here at Fatality Field tonight. I mean, in the big stadium, right, playing at the home of the Arizona Scorpions, the home of Eddie Gage, comes out over probably over 200 yards so far. We're just beginning in the third quarter, Cam. 9.48 to go in the third. Adams 20, Madison 17. Back and forth and back and forth we go. Defenses, you could see, are starting to get a little worn down. And it's up to Switch Thumper now to answer. Dylan Lewis, pretty excellent first half. Prince Wonder, a touch quiet. Of course, Ron Haynes has been Ron Haynes. Uh, Ron Haynes just doing Ron Haynes things, right? So now let's see what Madison does to respond, right? Obviously, Albuquerque so far, 10 unanswered points here since that drive into second quarter. Let's see what Switch Thumper can do. Thumper to pass, takes the drop off instead of going deep. Cameron Callahan is pushed forward by Ricky Robinson. Another tackle for Robinson, but that uh, picks up a first down for Callahan. Callahan's showing the speed, right? I mean, as soon as he was able to make that catch, having the awareness to know to just immediately go straight up the field, he was able to do that, split some tackles, and get the first down. Great for play, play there. Four wide, two to either side for Thumper. Four down lineman for the Adams. Thumper to pass. Thumper down the field, caught. First down to the 42 yard line. And that deep shot goes to Victor Williamson. Another different wide receiver making a catch in this game. I mean, everybody that can catch a pass in these offenses is catching one, right, Cam? I mean, just we're, we're hearing about people we haven't heard about all season long, and they always tell you, you got to show up for the big games, right? Well, everybody on in the wide receiver cores for both teams are showing up tonight. 8.50 to go in the third. I feel like we've already gone six rounds already. Hand off, Brown. Look at the blocking down the field. Man, Michael Brown was almost like he was waiting to get somebody blocked. he There was no one around him. Picks up a first down. Oh, and you're gonna see right here, Cam. I mean, that line just opened right Sheesh. up. 30 and 66 were just waiting for somebody. They double, just double teamed on Alex Marshall. Great blocking up front. If you're wondering, for all you rookies out there, how to block and what to do, watch that play over and over again. Beautiful play. If Jay Ballmer would have seen that other Adam coming into, his, coming into view, that may have been a touchdown for Brown. No as uh, Balmer takes a two-yard pick at the 27-yard line. And Madison stay in the course here to start the third quarter. They really think they can run the football on this Adams team. 
And uh, they're doing it tonight. I mean, and so far, they've done a really good job of that, right? I mean, Josh Slap on the other side has just made all the plays. But, I mean, this run, this running game of Madison is just breaking that front line down. That's what they're trying to do. Second and eight of the 27. Look at Balmer again. Six-yard pickup down to the 21. Third and one coming up. Hey, Balmer's just doing his best Hanzo impression, the fullback from Carolina, who really had a terrific season in season 19. And showing all fullbacks that they can be a big part of any SFLM offense. And Jay Balmer is getting that time right now. Madison, 86 rushing yards last week, 67 the week before against Albuquerque. This run game has been steadily getting better. This is their best night so far tonight. However, Michael Brown has stopped short of the yard to gain. And you have to think, even though it's fourth and one, you got to take the points to tie. Yeah, Michael Smith Jr. just being able to stop that play there in the backfield, making it a fourth and one, and that was a good play by the linebacker. Madison has had a 100-yard rushing game this season. They had 101 against Lexington in a 19-3 win. They dominated time of possession in that game too. Lexington finished with just 132 total yards of offense. This kick from Belson is good. That is the direction that we perceive the wind to be blowing in the back of the kickers, and we are tied at 20. Up back and forth, back and forth. Boy, it's just like a heavyweight that. title fight. <laughs> that was close. The wind oh. took that to the right, and he almost shanked that. Yeah, first off, you had a you had an Adam player was able to get through the yeah. line, and he just stopped right in front of the kicker, right? And then second, I think that may have got him a little bit where he may have pushed it off to the right, but he still was able just to get it uh, through the crossroads. SFLM championship games, championships in general in the SFL, they deliver. This could be the fifth of six one possession uh, minor league championship games over time. And of course, we just had that sensational uh, Arizona Baltimore championship. After that game, I don't smoke, Chad. I needed a smoke. It was, it was unbelievable. <laughs> I don't think you want to mention that game right now in this stadium, Cam. It still hurts. Uh, that, yeah. Sorry, people are throwing rocks at our window now in the press box. Yeah, Eddie was going to take us out to dinner after this. I don't think he's going to. <laughs> First and 10 at the 26-yard line, and a slap is only brought down for a gain of one. There's Periwinkle on the stop at 171 for slap, trying to match Say's 198 in the All-Star game earlier tonight, in case you missed that, and it'll bring up second and nine. He said not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that's what he was going to say. Whatever, man. EJ Wood just making a good point. Chad and I are grown men. We can take ourselves out to dinner. Yep. What's good in Arizona to eat? Uh, just look up the Yelp. It'll be fine. Second and nine at the 27. Patak fires outside, and they rule it incomplete to Ed Williams. Tough call. Wow. I was kind of surprised there. I thought he got one foot down. I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a challenge here. Seen one successful tonight from Madison. No challenge from Albuquerque. A little surprising. That would have brought up third and short. Yeah. Four wide. Attack, back to throw. Pressure from both defensive ends oh. and another drop. Wow, Bo Laverne this time for the Adams. And Albuquerque's got to punt the football away. How about Madison? They give up the drive at the end of the first half and a field goal. Then they give up yet another long Josh slap run. Things are starting to melt down. Madison's offense stays cool, calm, and collected. They get the running game going again. They get a field goal, and then they force a three and out, and they get the ball right back. Good composure there from the Lynx. Yeah, I mean, they're not getting phased in this game at all, right? I mean, when you watch Josh Slap getting over 170 yards and it's only the beginning of the third quarter, you think that would knock the wind out of your sails a little bit, right? But not this team. They're well-coached, well-disciplined. They're playing a fantastic game tonight. Frosty Times says in the chat, the wide receivers drop happy, not used to being watched by so many people. I kind of have to agree with them. I mean, this is a big stage, uh, you know, uh, the – Practice facilities, they hold about 15,000. This stadium holds about 63. That's a big difference for these young players. They're going to have to get used to it because when they start playing in them home stadiums, them home, st them home fans may not be so happy when they drop them passes, Cam. First and 10 for Thumper in a tie game at 20. Pump fake now fires to the uh, uh, top of the screen, and Cameron Callahan has another catch 
for 11 yards. They're the quarterback numbers tonight. Thumper having a terrific performance. Halfway to 400, another Lynx first down. Talked about Ty Patak being that quarterback that everybody was looking at as the first one taken. You know, I projected them to go to Denver with their second pick in the draft. But look at Switch Thumper showing people that, hey, I'm still here. I can play quarterback as well. And really just balling out tonight. You're a rivalry man. How about Eric Price going to Vegas? Can you believe that? Leaving Denver yeah, and going that to a rival? Was... I, I was always under the assumption that he would end up in Mexico City, but going to the rival oh. it just makes it very interesting. What a catch from Ron Haynes. That was a very awkward angle there for Switch Thumper, and he delivers again. Six-yard pickup. I hope that Mighty and Art are watching this game, right? I hope they're seeing what this tight end two of theirs is doing yep. because I'm telling you what, he is going to make some noise this season in the SFL. Four wide, second down and four. Thumper fires it out to Brown. Brown in stride. Had to spin for it, but didn't have to uh, slow down. Brown gets a first down to the Adam 38-yard line. Under five to go in the third, and Madison is back in control. And you can see Jeremy Vega in the chat needing a poised quarterback. No better way to show that than in a championship game. Absolutely correct, Jeremy, 100%. First and 10 of the Adam 38-yard line. Whether Jeremy's coaching or not, Denver, one of the most well-run organizations in the SFL. A big, uh, I almost wanted to say a Oprah favorite things kind of a person, right? It's like a Cameron's favorite people, Oprah's favorite things. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't, doesn't quite roll off the tongue like Oprah, but no. second down, incomplete pass. Yeah, it didn't roll off the tongue that well, but you are, but you are absolutely correct. I mean, Denver has always been one of those – well-ran organizations. My co-owner, Adam Wiseman, uh, was in Denver for, for a few seasons. Second and 10 of the Adam 38-yard line. Handoff to Balmer. And no gain there. Uh, Derek Gregg and Ashley Jackson uh, saying be back soon. I don't want to hear y'all come back and say, I, when I left, it was tied, and now what happened? All of a sudden, everything happened. Right. People always make that mistake, Chad. These games go quick. Third and 10 coming up. How, how can you leave, right? I mean, this is a fantastic game. We're in the middle of the third quarter. It's a tie ball game, championship game. Where do you, where else do you have to be? Thumper down the field to Callahan. Tried to roll for the first down. Tapped down at the 31. Another difficult decision here for Madison, but they do have the wind at their back for a 48-yarder to take the lead. Yeah, I think you've got to go for some points here, right? I mean, they that was a really good play there. Good catch by the receiver. Was able to try to roll his way up. And it looks like they're going to be in field goal range. Let's see if he's got enough leg here. That's the second time tonight we've seen a team make a very smart play, go on third down from being outside of field goal range to inside of field goal range to get some points. Belson, 48 yards with the wind at the back. Bang. Wow. 23 to 20. Madison takes the lead, but I do believe Albuquerque will have that win in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I mean, do you think that that would have been good from like 54? It was wobbling. Wobbling, was wobbling yeah. a little. Not the prettiest kick. Wobbling a little left. But uh, who knows? The wind blows it back back center and yeah, 50, 51, 52. Probably. Yeah, I, was, I thought it might have been a little bit more confidence, but you're right. Once you saw the wobble, yeah, I think you're, you're probably correct. It's probably going to be more like 52. Oh, great kick regardless. Christopher Slovic watching from the airport in Doha. Love that. Chris Slovic, one of our uh, best international people in the SFL. People yep. from, I believe, it's 13 different countries in the SFL. It's awesome. It's a lot. It just shows you that we're just a huge community, right? I mean, not just here locally in the States, but all over the world. Uh, you know, really being able to get to know some people in different countries, different cultures, is, is just such a great thing about this community. 322 to go in the third. Madison is back on top, 23 to 20. We have been tied in this game three times. That is our second lead change, and Adobe makes a catch for four yards. As we as we alluded to earlier, this is just like a heavyweight title fight, right? Just back and forth, back and forth. One hits one punch, another gets right. another punch. Awesome game to be a part of. Madison with two titles, season one and four. Albuquerque, two titles, season two and five. 
Patak down the field, nearly intercepted. Oh, just oh. couldn't squeeze it. Aminu had the chance, sets up third down. Very, not a lot of chances for picks tonight, quite frankly. Aminu let that one slip through his fingers. Yeah, I mean, both quarterbacks have been really consistent tonight. They've been really accurate, and, you know, they're not giving a lot of chances, like you said, and that was a huge chance. It was dropped by Aminu. Third and six. Patak, deep drop, steps up the pocket, off the foot, caught! First down of the Madison, 43-yard line, hits Adobe down the field, a confident throw from Ty Patak. It's a first down for Albuquerque. That just shows you the composure right there of Patak, right? The pocket was collapsing on him. He steps up in the pocket, throws a dart right there to Adobe in the middle of the field. Beautiful throw there by Ty Patak. Woo! Put that on a rope, that six little, foot that two. That little sizzle to it. Yeah, six foot two, 21 there, slaps numbers, 10 carries. A buck 71, did most of his work on that 97-yard touchdown, but still averaging 10 yards a carry outside of that run. 228 to go in the third quarter, handoff slap, not much there. Madison has really cut down on him since that second touchdown, wrapped up by Periwinkle. Claudius Periwinkle, the first time I've gotten to say that name tonight. I've been looking forward to calling his name. I think it's Periwinkle the third, uh, but great tackle there by Periwinkle. Something about that name I like. Two and five to go in the third. Slap is Ooh. speared. Loss of two on the play. Maurice Peterson with the tackle for Madison will set up a third and long, and here we are back in another situation outside of field goal range with the potential to get in it on third down. Reese Peterson just slapped, slaps mama right there. I mean, that was just a beautiful hit in the backfield and putting him in a third and long situation. Four wide, three to the top of the screen, far side left. 3-2 defense out of Madison. Patak airmails an incomplete pass. That was a mess. And I think Patak just kind of got rid of it. Uh, good job by Madison's defensive front to totally blow up that pocket. Uh, I mean... That pocket was just like you said. I mean, it was just crumbling pretty quick, so he had to get rid of that ball. Good heads up play there by the quarterback. Uh, Periwinkle in the chat. It is Periwinkle the third. My dad and grandpa were also Claudius's. There you go. It's just a fantastic name, Claudius Periwinkle the third. Let's add that to the to the uh, roster sheet. And uh, he's not the only third on his team because you got Xavier oh. Row the third as well on the squad as Madison looks for their third championship. They're up by three in the third quarter. Can we continue? Unbelievable. That's just, that's just, a, <laughs> that's just the sign, right? That's the omen. <laughs> that's it. I was just looking on my screen. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Threes everywhere. What else is gonna happen? First and 10 at the 20 for the Lynx. Up three, getting the stop off the Aaron throw from Patak. They, Give it right back to Bomber. Telling you, this Madison team, it's just crazy. The first game of the season, they open up with the Albuquerque Adams, and it's just an aerial assault. They just dominate the Adams through the air. Uh, Thumper passed for 422 yards, and uh, Shatashi Nakamoto was the running back. He had five carries for two yards. And the fullback wasn't even on the roster. <laughs> like, it, it just, it's nuts. Both these guys weren't even on the roster in that game, yet here they are uh, trying to run all over the Adams, third and seven. No, third and seven here for Albuquerque. They got to get a stop. Switch Thumper through 74 times in that game has been great tonight. Thumper, third down, pump fake, fires into traffic, passes oh. popped up in the air, nearly oh. caught at the end of the play, but incomplete. Oh, my goodness. Now the defenses are sharpening up, but no one's still able to get their hands on a pick, and the Lynx will have to punt it away. I thought that was going to be it, right? The interception, we talked about it earlier. Nobody's had an opportunity to get a pick. There's a bunch of bobbling around there playing hot potato. Nobody wanted to claim it. Another uh, bizarre stat uh, in the two games between these two teams, Joseph Lama of Madison, two-way, uh, he has five picks against Albuquerque this season, which is like insane. 
Um, but he's actually been really quiet tonight. They have totally avoided him um, and have not looked his way hardly at all. Uh, Llama number 33 at free safety hushed this evening. I mean, do you blame them? <laughs> right? Like if that if I if I know that there's a player that's gotten five interceptions against me, I'm not going near him. <laughs> but tack in the chat, don't you jinx me. Hey, <laughs> I'm just I'm just doing my job, man. First and ten at the Adams 42 yard line. And off the slap running left and an excellent play off the line by Periwinkle the third. Fifth solo tackle of the night. Drops slap for a loss of a yard. And that is the end of the third quarter. Put your fours, twelves, eighty-sixes, and sixty-eights in the chat. Honor the fallen and honor this great championship game with Madison up three. You're watching the SFLM Season Six Championship on YouTube. Chad Rowland, Cameron Irvine. It is our pleasure to be here with you tonight in Fatality Field in Phoenix, Arizona. If you want to join us for dinner, Eddie Gage will not be there, but we will after this ball game. <laughs> Yeah, knowing him, he might have just went cheap anyway. <laughs> Second and 11. Patak fires an incomplete pass. Was actually looking for the first time tonight to the fullback. No, the tight end ran Cullen. Unable to make the play. So third and 11, and all of a sudden, both offenses are in the mud a bit. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, I think the defenses were going to sharpen up and really just you know hold them down, and that's what we're seeing so far right here. Patak out of the gun, four wide. The wind is at Albuquerque. He's back down three. Patak fires outside, wide open. Can he slide for the first? Oh, he got he it. Still got it. Oh, my goodness. Bo Laverne was so wide open. He took an, an additional three seconds to glide it towards the first down marker. By the time he was touched, he crossed the sticks. That is an incredible play. I mean, he just like almost looked like he fell asleep there for a second and didn't even want to get up. A race against a time. Play. And off the slap and slap is wrapped up quickly. Man, Dan Dash makes the play. This Madison defensive front, or front seven rather, has been much better in the second half. Dash, five and a half sacks this season, second best in the league. Yeah, the Madison front four has really just buckled down on this half, really stopping slap. I mean, besides that first drive there in the third quarter, uh, after that drive, though, he has not really done a lot since. Ten minutes to go. Madison 23, Albuquerque 20. If both teams, if one of these teams wins, someone's getting their third, another drop. Boy, oh, boy, that is Honus Adobe. Man. Now everyone getting affected in clutch time. Yeah, this, this drops, the dropsies are just passing through everywhere over here, right? I mean, left and right. And I don't think, I don't think any player has more than one. It just seems like every single person in this game tonight has had a drop it's been crazy yeah i, I gotta agree with you i think that I, i'm maybe besides ed williams i don't know if i've seen him drop one yet but i think everybody else has third and eight at the madison 45 patak's going empty here five wide three to the uh, bottom of the screen shorts or uh, far side left is patak Fires down the field, caught Williams. First down to the 31, a 14-yard pickup. I thought you were going to jinx him there, Chad, but uh, Williams hauls it in for a first down. Uh, we used to run some good drills in Indianapolis all the time. That guy's got some hands, so good play there by Ed Durham Williams to make the catch. Nine thirty-six. I don't know to if go. you saw this, Cam. I don't know if you saw yeah. that, but uh, Eddie did offer up White Castles, which I will never turn down. Did he now? I'm surprised with his uh, workout regimen, he would even entertain White Castle. First and ten at the Madison thirty-one, but Tack fires outside, and that is the eligible oh. tackle making the play. Brenton Willis. No dropsies for him. 6'5", 290. Makes the seven-yard pickup. I think that's the exact play the Lions ran last weekend. I think it is, right? I love it when the big guys get big plays, right? I wish they would, he was able to get into the end zone. That way we can see a big guy touchdown dance. Second and three, 9'10 to go in the ball game. Albuquerque is in scoring position. Hand off the slap. He could not get outside. Driven backwards for a... 
one yard loss with forward progress. This time, Dean Lear with the tackle. I don't think I've ever called so many names in a championship. Everyone contributing tonight on both sides of the ball. Dean Lear has really been a guy that has been able to get enough pressure but not make the play, right? Was able to get enough to seal that edge. This time, he seals the edge and makes the play. Good heads up tackle there by Lear. Third and four, audible. And Patak got it late to Adobe. Mm. It's fourth down. He did not have the space in the pocket, Chad, to step up into that throw. And a good job by the Madison defensive front will force a Verity field goal. Yeah, that, you know, the, the, the pocket, once again, was just not there. The blocking wasn't very good. And, and that really, his vision was really impaired, too, as well, because he threw to that side where, the, where the, all the pressure was and just not enough time to get Adobe in bounds. Another 40-plus yard field goal in this game. We've seen five field goals made. Three of them have been 40 yards or more. This is from 42. And Verity bangs that through. Good. Tie game at 23. Our fourth tie of the game. Yep, like we said, back and forth. This is going to be a one possession game. I think we know it. Whoever has the ball last is going to probably try to win this game there, Cam. 7 10. 20 and 23 and last season Albuquerque won their championship by a final score of 26 to 23. We we're one field goal away from that. Uh, we now we did have this earlier this year, right, where they were in an overtime game between these two teams. Yep. So maybe we could see this again. 8:28 to go. 6 for 6 are the two kickers tonight showing out. There are Quite a few uh, kicking positions open in SFL um, coming up uh, this weekend on the draft, and we'll see where they all end up. Including one in Indianapolis, right? I'm going to need a kicker. I'm watching this game very carefully to see what these guys are doing, and right now so far, I can see either of those guys in a Rambler uniform. Kicker's tough to predict because not all teams take them. Uh, most do these days, but it's a... Uh, tough to uh, be a Nostradamus about as Balmer takes the carry, but for the first time tonight picks up nothing. We'll bring up second and ten. Yeah, when I was in London, Cam, we had one year where we did a generic kicker. Peter McLongfellow, if you remember that, hit a game winner, 48-yarder against Atlanta in week one to win the game. Was that the same season? Didn't he kick one at the convention? I think so, yeah. Against Fort Worth? Right. Yeah. I believe so. Pass incomplete. Looking down the field for um, maybe Callahan, Osborne Davis in coverage. No, they were looking for Walker that time. So third down and 10 coming up for Thumper. Madison has taken six seconds off the clock since Albuquerque tied the game. Yeah, and, and what are they doing? They're passing the ball, right? They've been running the ball all day very well. Here we are in a five-wide set. I don't, I don't know if I like this call there, Cam. Thumper, five wide, third and 10. Dumps it short, that's a three and out. And not much happening there for Madison's offense. Almost every drive tonight, Chad, I've noticed that they've handed off to Balmer on first down. I think Albuquerque caught on to it and put the links behind the sticks. Now the Adams get the chance to retake the lead. Yeah, uh, you know, once they get that first down, you know, you usually want to see some positive yardage and, and it ends up not working out for them right here on this drive there, Cam. Triple digits in the chat. And a tight one here in the SFLN Championship game. A very tight game. This is what we thought that was going to happen when we come in, and, I'm, and this is just exactly what I was hoping would happen tonight. Great game so far. 7.13 left. Who's going to be the hero of this one? Last season it was Mickey Melillo. Who's it going to be? First and 10 at the Adam 37-yard line. 7.13 to go in the fourth. Hand off the slap. This time running left. He's going back inside and picks up only three. Curious decision there from slap. His poorest run of the night. Tackle made by Woods, among others. Yeah, I'm not sure if maybe him getting slapped around in the backfield right. lately made him think that there was some ghosts that were coming to get him, but no reason to spin there at all. He really lost some momentum. I think if he wouldn't have spun, he would have got the first down and maybe even a little bit more. 
Second and seven, I formation here for Albuquerque. Tie game at 23. Sixth SFLM championship game. Handoff slap, sticking with their guy. Picks up a couple more. We'll set up third and five. Not a single turnover in this game. Again, not trying to jinx, just find it fascinating. Yeah, it's very fascinating. I thought maybe there was going to be some turnovers going on in here. You know, we had the fumble, but nothing happened with that. But uh, both teams have just been very well disciplined tonight. Four wide, Westlake off the left side of the line, running a uh, route down the middle of the field. It's not going to matter. Williams makes yet another catch. She's been sure-handed tonight. Newton North on the stop. North has had an incredible uh, season. Nine passes defended, second in SFLM. Uh, and he is just, he's all over the football. Very good lockdown corner. Yep, and those are the type of guys that GMs just drool over, right? Somebody that's going to be able to make the play. Yeah, he may not have a lot of interceptions, but as you said, second in the in a pass play. Oh, slap! Oh, God. Is brutalized in the backfield. And then getting up and doing a dance. That's Lear with another TFL. I don't know where he came from. I don't think slap knew either. Oh, he just got slapped. Right. I've been trying to make that work all night and it's not working, but I got to tell you, I mean, he, charm. that was I mean, the best one. That was the best one. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Dean Lear has just done a fantastic job. He has been a big force so far. Patak down the middle, caught, had a trailing blocker, but couldn't get it set up. That pass hauled in by Jefferson again. Sets up a third and three at the Madison 40. Under five to go. I don't know if I've seen a game where the generic wide receivers have gotten so much throws. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I mean, I know that each team has two wide receivers on each side, but usually they're the ones that are hogging all the targets, and tonight it's just not the case. Third down and three. Patak changing the play out of the shotgun. Fires outside. Oh, Adobe oh. dropped it trying to slide, running out of real estate. And they credit him only tonight with one drop, but that's honestly his second, and the drive stalls. Oh, poor, poor Honus Adobe. Lost man. his footing. I mean, Honus, I, I believe he's from Atlanta, if I remember correctly, on a two-way contract. I think he needs a little bit more time in the minors to get them hands clean because I got to tell you, that's just a bad day. Was, that was a good throw by Patak right in his bread basket. Yes, he slid, but he's still got to make the play. Punt is away from Ralph Bennington. Drops it punt. beautifully down to the seven-yard line. So the last time we were inside the 10, <laughs> Josh Slap loses three yards. Ty Patak steps over him, gets oh. Slap all worked up, and then he rushes for 97 yards. How's this drive going to go for the Lynx? Well, it depends. Is Switch Thumper going to disrespect his running back here too? We'll see. <laughs> if that situation plays out with Marcus Brown, or Michael Brown, I'm going to lose it. Uh, yeah, I think we could just like just call it. Instead, <laughs> Brown picks up a solid five yards. You know, with the way that Madison has been running the football and the way they've been controlling the clock tonight, Albuquerque better be careful because this long drive may be it. The Lynx may not give them the ball back. Yeah, I agree, I think, and that's exactly what I was going to say. I think this is a drive where Madison's really got to rely on Brown and Balmer here. Brown, one yard gain, and... Ooh. No huddle out of Madison. This is, this is interesting. It's almost like they're trying to extend the game in case they don't get the first down. Brown one hit and it's oh, smacked down. Oh. And it forces a fourth down. Michael Smith Jr. with the stop. And the Adams will end up with excellent field position. Ouch town population, you bro. That hurt. That hurt me in the booth. Right? I mean, what a hit. But here we are, Madison. I mean, that was just bad play calling all the way around. The good news for the Lynx about running that uh, no huddle there a little early is now they have more hope of getting the football back. It was almost like, Chad, the Lynx sensed that they were in some trouble, wanted to make sure that their offense would get the ball back with some better position. I don't know if they thought because they were pinned down that they thought that they just had to be like that. I I'm not really sure exactly, like I said, what the play calling was. I just think that was terrible they coaching right there. I mean, yeah, they panicked a little. They panicked a little. I think they, they definitely panicked. Big time moment, big time situation for the title. Team that is disciplined like this, they need to be better than that. Single high safety, Patak out of the shotgun. Running slants, passes caught. Wow. 
Ed Williams showing up for the Adams tonight. First down to the 36. And I'll tell you what, I'm almost kind of regretting cutting this guy. Right? I mean, look at this. I mean, I mean, he's just making catches left and right tonight. Maybe you should be in the uh, booth full gotta, time yeah, then if you're making, that, you're making those decisions. Maybe they need to pull you out of the owner's box, put you in the booth permanently. What happened? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> First and 10, then Matt, Matt, the Madison 36, he probably knew you were here tonight and uh, showing up. Got something to prove. Pass, hauled in. That's uh, that's the tight end. Rand Cullen picks up four. Now we're down to 240. And Madison's in a prickly situation here. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. I mean, now they're almost in field goal range, right? I mean, a little slant pass here. I could see that happening as they're showing Ed Williams. And that could get Albuquerque into field goal range. And they could just drain this clock for the win, Cam. With, with the wind, I think they are in field goal range right now. But Tack fires it outside. Pass caught first down to the 25. That's Honus Adobe making up for what has been a challenging night for him. That's going to drag us down to the two-minute warning. And one more first down. And Madison could be in serious trouble. Can Albuquerque in back-to-back -back seasons win 26-23 on a game winner? No. no. Let's find out. You're watching the SFLM Season 6 Championship on YouTube. You can't make this stuff up. You cannot at all. Four wide. Empty backfield for Ty Patak on a throw with two minutes to go. Patak fires down the field. It is oh. dropped by Slap. He drops oh. a pass. And that stops the clock. Wow. I mean, Josh Slap, I was praising him, talking about maybe he Crazy. would be one of those backs that gets picked, you know, in a two-back system. I mean, you got to make those catches, young man. You have got to make those catches. Because in that situation, this is a championship game. I don't know if the nerves are getting to you or not, but no excuse on that one. So now Albuquerque will need at least another couple first downs to run this clock out. Patak's going to throw again. Outside. That is Ooh. caught. Boy, that was dangerous. Ooh. A one-yard gain. He does manage to stay in bounds. And Madison surprisingly not calling a timeout. That pass was caught by the fullback Gladwin Sky. 5'11", 200. <laughs> Very undersized fullback. Now Albuquerque going quick here. Third and nine. They're going to run. No, they do not run clock. Patak is sacked. Oh, really? First sack of the game, and it's a safety blitz. Maurice Peterson comes up with the stop, and Madison is still hanging on to all their timeouts. I think that Mike Prococo's listened to me. I was bad-mouthing the offensive play call, and he just comes up with a big defensive call there. Blitzing the safety wow. out of nowhere. We haven't seen that all night long. Great play there by Madison. Now Albuquerque panicking. They quickly snap the football. 47-yard field goal is good. Another oh, wow. made field goal. But Albuquerque totally botches the last minute and five seconds and gives Madison 55 seconds and all three timeouts to try and make something with this. Wow. And th I've got to tell you, this is what I was hoping would happen, right? You get a quick field goal here with a minute to go, three timeouts. This is just insanity, Cam. I can't wait to see how this plays out. Yeah, actually, a good call. Uh, Maurice Peterson. Was Eddie Gade? Yeah, yeah, Maurice Peterson coming off the outside on that blitz. That was a heck of a risky call. Paid off, not a single sack all night in this game, Chad, until that play by Maurice Peterson. Yeah, it was a bold strategy, and it paid off for him, right? I mean, that, I mean, if you're going to fool this Albuquerque Adams offense, I mean, that was the play to do it. Great play call. Matt Ryan in the chat. This is where legends are made. Switch, make it happen. First and 10 at the 27-yard line, 51 seconds to go. Thumper. Down the field, caught. Prince Wonder, oh, the Madison 41-yard line. All they need is a field goal to force overtime. Still holding on to all their timeouts. 
I like the routes that these wide receivers are running. This could open up the field here, Cam. Thumper down the field, intercepted! Oh. Intercepted, Albuquerque is one first down from taking it. Dante Grimm gave up the touchdown earlier in the two-way out of Louisiana. Snags the first interception of the night. Now that looked like, look, he was kind of, I mean, he was playing back, but he had that help over the top right, playing that old slot ways in Louisiana, right, where he's a little bit more comfortable and makes a big play. Wow, Dante Grimm making up for that touchdown bonder earlier. The Adams trying to hold on to identical and back-to-back -back SFLM championship scores. They need a first down to ice this one away. Slap. Takes the handoff and is met immediately. I think that was Periwinkle again. Yeah, it was. Get out of the way. Yep, there you go. Wow. I mean, I, I mean, that was just all night. These quarterbacks have just been accurate, right? Throwing good balls, not putting themselves in situations. We've seen a couple of maybe double, triple covers throws. But, I mean, that was just a big time play. I oh, Dante boy. Graham. Albuquerque is now taking knees, and Madison going to get another chance. Yeah. And I, I almost mean, I almost wonder, Chad, is that because of the last drive? They don't just don't want to take any chances. They botched that last series. Yep. This is this is wild. Yeah, I'm I'm really surprised by this, right? Because you know they're going to get probably 15 seconds by the time the punt is down right i mean not really too sure but and you're gonna have plenty of time for one play but i mean they are gonna be pinned pretty deep i mean what are they what if they block it i mean how can you even take the chance yeah, i i don't even know what's going on here right as soon as i you know i mean i talk about one side having some bad play calling there's another side right i mean obviously and granted there is only 30 seconds left Yes, they're going to have a lot of field to gain on, but we've seen big plays happen. We saw one the other night, 97-yard touchdown run, right? So yep. I, I, I just don't know what they're doing here, Cam. I, I just don't like this idea. Now, you would think Ron Haynes is the guy. Um, if you're going to try to hit him deep, they really have not gone deep much tonight except that corner route. And Madison oh, wow. inexplicably lets the ball die inside the five. And they're going to start from their one Yard line. Well, that makes Albuquerque look super smart. I don't know what Madison's returner is doing on that play. Both of these teams have just had a manic final two minutes. Yeah, a lot of the pressure of the big game is getting to all these players, right? But right now, Switch Thumper's telling them wow. it's time to put the women and children to bed and go and look for dinner. 17 seconds left in the game, Cam. From the one, Switch Thumper, 17 seconds left. Running around, oh. hit as he threw the passes. Caught oh. by Haynes, but I think they may run out of time. 28 a yard line, five seconds One left. Switch. Four, three, two, one, One, and that's oh. it. And Albuquerque's your back-to-back -back SFLM champions for the first time in SFLM at back-to-back. -back. Follows up the Baltimore dynasty, and the Adams have done it again. Wow, what a way to end the game, right? I mean, this game has just been nothing short of amazing. This is one that everybody's going to be talking about for a really long time. No turnovers for the Adams tonight. 407 yards of offense. And they would I, I don't think they win this game, Chad, without that exchange between Josh Slap and Ty Patak. It, it, it turned this game into a battle because before that play happened, Madison was dominating yeah madison was looking really strong in that opening draw you know opening quarter right they get that play from from josh slap 97 yards and all of a sudden the momentum changes right you go into the half you get that field goal with the last drive you come back in the top of the second half was able to get a touchdown you had 10 unanswered points right there quick and and albuquerque just putting the clamps down on defense and just done a beautiful job tonight Wow, what a game. Slap got shut down uh, there in the fourth quarter. Ron Haynes got shut down in the second half. I mean, did he even have a second half catch? Um, he had that one at the end there. Yeah, you're right. The one at the very end, which great job by, uh, by Thumper stepping up in the pocket. I mean, what else more can you want?
hits Haynes down the field. He was open, but uh, not open enough. And then you got Alex Marshall on the other side for the Adams. What a game. 11 solo tackles from the free safety. A lot of players balled out tonight. Wasn't the best night for receivers, but uh, other than that, man, we had a heck of a ball game. Yeah, it was a good night if you were not a contracted receiver, right? I mean, because you got a lot of targets thrown at you. You had some pretty big moments there, some catches. I mean, you did make some drops, but overall, I mean, there was a play right there too. I mean, Dante Grimm, you know, sealing the game. But I got to tell you, I mean, you know, Josh Slap, I mean, yes, he was shut down in the fourth quarter, but man, was he dominant through the first three. You almost wonder, I don't think it would have mattered if Thumper would have gotten more air under that. That was a pretty good throw under duress. Haynes did all he could. Player of the game, got to believe, yep, Josh Slap. 19 carries, 173 yards, two touchdowns, had nine through the air. What a game, what a season. Season six in the books. That's now 25 total SFL, SFLM seasons. Fatality Field, wonderful hosts. The Chad Rowland, I'm Cameron Irvine. This has been a presentation of the Simulation Football League. Presented by APM Music, and we'll see you tomorrow night for the draft. Good night, everybody. Good night.